This is the first video I've uploaded since Johnny Goudreau and Matthew Goudreau's passing, and today I want to take a moment of silence before the video to honor both of them. Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be making a big video talking about Leon Draisaitl's record-setting contract and how this affects Edmonton and the rest of the NHL. So make sure you watch till the end as we go through all of the NHL contract talk presented by BetUS and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey content just like this all throughout the year. Now it has been a major topic of debate over the past few months about Leon Draisaitl's upcoming UFA status. What would happen? Would he go to another team? And there was all these rumors about him going to San Jose, which let's be honest honest was never going to happen i'm sorry for all the sharks fans that started to believe that but come on guys really but as we start to get closer to a deal a lot of the speculation was about what the deal would look like would it make him the highest paid player in nhl history and in terms of av at least in the current era it does Elliot Freeman was the one to break it this morning, saying that the Edmonton Oilers and Leon Dreisettel have made significant progress on a contract extension. No one is commenting, but it appears we are close to an eight-year extension. And of course, in the very next follow-up tweet, he gives us the exact details, saying we will see the exact total, but AV is approximately $14 million, which is now the highest in the NHL. My first thought was, wow, Leon Dreisettel absolutely deserves this, especially considering his last contract, which we saw him sign and all the way back in 2017, he had a cap hit of $8.5 million starting in 2018, and that's come all the way until this season. You could argue that Dry Saddle has been worthy of maybe $4 million more for like five years now, and honestly, you'd have a good point. At the time, back in 2017, when it was signed, a lot of people saw it as a ludicrous deal for Dry Saddle, but since then, he's made it more than worth the Oilers' bargain, and since then, he has been underpaid for so long. I would honestly say since the second year of of that deal in 2019 it's been a massive underpayment you can see what he's been able to do in 2018 his first year after that extension he got 70 points in 78 games and since then has not looked back 105 points 110 points 84 points in 56 games 110 points 128 points 106 points he has been a scoring machine and maybe what's been most impressive is the playoff statistics. His first playoff run in 2017, he got 16 points in 13 games, and in 2020, 6 points, 2021, 5 points. But since then, he has been a monster. 32 points, 18 points, 31 points in this last playoff run. Dryer Settle has been worth so much for the Oilers and arguably their most consistent playoff performer. But these numbers recently are especially impressive when you consider that back in 2022, where he got 32 points in 16 games. He had an ankle injury sustained in the first round versus LA you also have pretty big injuries as well from this last playoff run too and it's pretty crazy to see that production even with the adversity that he's went through I don't think there are many players that can say they've done as well as dry saddle over the past few years with the injuries that they sustained still in key moments coming up clutch but that's what dry saddle has continually been able to do for Edmonton now there was some talk even recently that dry saddles deal could come maybe under 14 million as Frank Cervelli mentions I think in the end the number is going to and probably now even over the last week we heard some rumors about dry settles contract potentially being under 14 million potentially with the deferred uh salary that we saw in the jarvis deal as frank civilly mentions i think in the end the number is going to end up probably being one that starts with 14 if not a shade under it but even though we heard a few weeks ago that it could have been maybe more in the 14.5 million dollar range i think it was always most likely that both of these parties were going to meet in the middle somewhere and at 14 million yes is it a massive contract absolutely but you can't say that dry saddle doesn't deserve it this guy has been a beast through and through here's the thing though even though leon dry saddle is now signed to this massive extension it is far from over for this oilers management team because you have coming up after this next offseason evan bouchard being an rfa and after next season in 2026 you have connor mcdavid being a ufa now we're going to talk about how this affects the oilers future and what could happen next for them but first let's talk about today's sponsor in bet us especially if you're riding high with the dry saddle contract being signed there are a lot of bets you can make with the oilers this next year you can go through the pacific division winner right now the oilers have the best odds at plus 120 you can also go through the conference winners and go to the western conference where the oilers also have the best odds there at plus 400 you also got the stanley cup winner with them also being number one out of every team here with plus 900 the oilers are pretty big favorites throughout the rest of this next season we'll see how they end up doing but if you want to make your own picks go in the description down below and sign up to bet us today now getting into what this means for the oilers future coming up here in the other 
other free agents they need to sign. You can see when it comes to the projected cap space for the next couple of years, it's pretty rocky, especially when you consider Evan Bouchard is an RFA after this next year. They're currently projected to have $10 million to work with for all of next season, and that's not even counting the other free agents they have. Now, I'm not too worried about 2026, considering some of those free agents are mostly just depth. You have players like Jeff Skinner, Connor Brown, Derek Ryan, Ty Emerson, nothing that's gonna be too crazy to worry about. The big problem though is just having $10.6 million to work with, a lot of that, or maybe even all of it, might be swallowed up by Evan Bouchard's next deal. I think it's a pretty good likelihood that Bouchard continues to build on momentum that he established this last year, and he's somebody that really exploded in a major way getting 82 points in 81 games and in the playoffs as well also dominating getting 32 points in 25 games after having a great playoff run in 2023 offensively but he's gonna be 25 when he hits free agency and he's gonna have all of the momentum on his side here with how important he is to that Oilers power play how important he is that offense really besides Ekholm Bouchard is that Oilers defense for better and for worse and he's somebody that Edmonton needs to keep in any way possible the main problem though is not even Bouchard getting that money but just because of the limited options Edmonton's going to have next offseason let's say Bouchard gets nine million dollars you have 1.6 million dollars to work with right now if you don't trade anybody else maybe they're able to offload a Kane contract maybe they offload the entire prospect pool to get rid of Darnell Nurse's contract but as of right now they're gonna have very limited options to add to that bottom six and they're gonna have to rely on prospects and ELCs to fill the void which considering Edmonton's prospect pool is going to be risky. But then, of course, you have the big one here in Connor McDavid, and Dry is going to get paid, Bouchard is going to get paid, but Connor McDavid especially is going to get massive money and will demolish what Leon Dry gets for sure. Now, looking at Edmonton's cap situation, you, of course, look ahead to 2027, which is when Dr McDavid's contract would be up, and you can see they have $49 million to work with, which feels like a lot and it is for right now but when you factor in two years ahead of time that cap space is going to be gone pretty quickly you of course have a bunch of that cap probably a fourth of it being swallowed up by evan bouchard's new deal you also have matthias at and brett kulak on the defense who are going to be ufas that year you got other ufas like evander kane but really the big one who i think will swallow up a lot of cap at least if he continues to improve will end up being stuart skinner who's an ufa at the same time as mcdavid and he's going to get paid pretty big here we know what Skinner is capable of when he at, is at his best he's somebody over the last couple of seasons has put up some pretty good numbers for Edmonton in the playoffs has been shaky here and there but really turned it on in the second half of the playoffs last year which was a big reason why the Oilers were able to make such a push for the Stanley Cup I think it's fair to say that Skinner could get a pretty massive raise at least two times what he's getting right now if he's continuing to improve maybe even a little bit more than that and he's going to be a big contract that'll swallow up a lot of cap here for the Oilers here's the thing I'm not really too concerned the Oilers will be able to re -sign Bouchard able to re-sign McDavid I think it's going to happen especially considering McDavid I think will take a pay cut by about a few million if he's around the 16 million dollar range for instance I think that's a pay cut of like 20 million dollars McDavid deserves to get paid so much but it's not going to happen considering he already took a pretty solid pay cut with his last deal and I think McDavid is just one of those players like Crosby before him that is going to take a decent pay cut to make sure his team is as competitive as possible and 16 million for McDavid any team would take that any day the big problem that I see coming up for Edmonton, though, is that even though you will be able to get these deals done, at what cost? It is going to make things incredibly sharp for this Oilers team, and every little dollar will count even more, even more than it does already. Even with this Oilers team that is already cap-strapped, already has these anchor contracts, already has these big problems with Darnell Nurse and Evander Kane and these bad contracts on the team. Every bad contract is going to matter even more when you're paying Settle that much more when you're paying Evan Bouchard that massive pay raise that is going to be three times what his deal is right now. It is going to be really bad for an Oilers cap situation and especially considering their primes that they have going on here it might be these next couple of years or bust now I do think the Oilers have a strong chance at getting there at least compared to some other teams out there they're one of the five teams that I would say has some of the best chances of winning the cup over the next year with how they proved themselves in this last playoffs but at the same time it might be one of those situations like Colorado is facing right now where you might be able to win that Stanley Cup you might be able to get over that threshold but the cap is really going to come screeching at a halt and in the Oilers case it's going to be a really big 
hurdle to clear. But if a team like Colorado, who has had pay cuts all throughout the roster, especially in players like Kale McCarr's cases, and is a team that I think has had a much better prospect pool throughout their prime contending years than Edmonton has, and even if they're having problems the way that they're having problems, that is pretty bad news for this Oilers team in the future. It was bound to happen. It's a good problem to have. Your players are so good, you have to play, pay them so much. But I think for the Oilers, depth was already an issue, and... Over the next couple of years, it might be the best it ever gets, even though it is still an issue as it is right now. They were able to do well in this last playoffs. Players like Connor Brown, Matthias Janmark played huge roles for this Oilers team, but it's going to be really tight here, and they're going to need every player to come up in a massive way. It's going to be fascinating, though, to see how the next few years for this Oilers team turns out, because it is a turnaround over five years ago or so when they weren't even a confirmed playoff team. Now they are. Now they're a contender, but... It's going to be really difficult to improve and get better. And I think the Oilers management has some tough years coming up. It's going to be a really interesting next few seasons, though. But with these deals coming up, things are going to get hectic. But I would love to your thoughts down below on what you guys think happens for the Oilers in the future. Or do you think they're still able to win that Stanley Cup? Do you think Cap Heck is coming for them? And what do you think happens to Bouchard's deal, to McDavid's deal? How much do you see both of those guys getting? I would love to know your thoughts down below. Of course, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. And of course, make sure you comment down your thoughts on everything we talked about here today. And click on this card for all of my Western Conference talk right in one playlist. My name is Nathan. And I hope you have a fantastic hockey day. Sound to bet us down below as well. And I will see you in the next one, y'all. Goodbye.